Hey everybody, what's up? All right, so if my voice goes in and out a little bit, I do have somewhat of a cold, my bad. Uh, but in this video, what I want to talk about is that software development is just simply difficult. Like when I look at being a programmer and I look at being, uh, you know, having to learn like the latest stuff, that's no problem. It really just depends on my level of mood uh, that day, whether or not I truly am, and you know, and, and enjoying the learning process. There's nothing wrong with learning, and I actually love learning. So that's one of the reasons why I do YouTube and I talk to other people, and I, I think it's one of the reasons why I've been able to succeed as a software developer. Now, every time I'm learning, it doesn't mean that I'm motivated to learn because I think the one caveat to learning that makes it no fun almost every time is like when you're dealing with uh, deadlines, and that's something that we deal with in software engineering all the time. There's always some deadline. And I think the longer you've been doing this, the more you realize like you know there's going to be unrealistic deadlines and you can't kill yourself over that. Uh, they're just going to be extended, and that's just the way it works. And um, unfortunately, yeah, that, that just simply happens. I think the longer you've been doing this, uh, the less you freak out, like the sky is falling type of thing when you're coming up on a deadline. Uh, but that said, also, there are certain deadlines that are somewhat personal in nature where it's like, okay, you've been working on something for a week or two weeks now. Like, what the hell's going on with it? You got to finish it up. And you start to kind of have this like internal timer. Uh, that I feel like I have naturally where I know where I'm not being as productive as I, sh as I should be. And like, you know, that's where it's like, oh, damn, I'm stuck on this problem. And um, that's where learning, I think, is not fun. So one of the harder parts of, of software development is having to learn all the time, but then having to learn when you're either mo unmotivated because of external things going on in your life or just simply that um, there is a deadline and uh, it, it just seems to make it more difficult to learn. So when you enjoy that learning process, there's probably no better job than being a software developer and learning new things. Uh, for some reason, I look at learning new things and I'm always like, I think I take it from like a business perspective, like how can I make the business better with this? Maybe I can make my you know money doing this or whatever. Maybe I really enjoy it and I can teach other people, but um, it's not always fun, I would say. So another thing I look at as I've been doing this for a long time now is like, I sort of uh, look up to managers and, uh, and directors and things that can actually juggle all the balls in the air when it comes to doing software development. I look at it sometimes and I'm just like, whoa, it's difficult enough being a um, just, you know, a, a regular software engineer. But then when you have to like manage, um, you know, teams of people and it's like one decision after the next almost all day long, you know, sometimes you're cutting corners, sometimes like you're making uh, you're changing your path entirely. Um, you know, those decisions I think are really, really difficult to make because obviously as you go further up, you're like reporting to people that are really high up in the company. So, and on some days, like I, I just don't envy that position at all. A lot of people say that, you know, they get into management and they really don't like it. So it's a, it's a totally different trajectory from software development in my opinion. Uh, just a couple of uh, other opinions on that. I, you know, I feel like a, a good manager is somebody that doesn't freak out. You know, that um, you have to be a multitasker. You have to be uh, the type of person that can take it one day at a time, but then also be able to look into the future and constantly be planning out that future always. Like when it's coming, uh, when you're dealing with deadlines and um, just unpre unpredictable nature of this business. I think no matter how long you've been doing it, like you kind of know that you just can't predict the future and there's going to be these different roadblocks and hurdles along the way and almost nothing ever goes as planned. So for all those reasons, I feel like, you know, a manager, if you're going to be good at, at software, uh, you, you got to be, at least from a man management perspective, you got to be humble. Um, you got to, uh, I, I think, be empathetic as well. So. Uh, empathetic towards your individual developers when they're struggling with a problem or maybe they got something else going on in their life or whatever it might be. But uh, ultimately, I find the best managers are people that uh, that are like that. Now, you can give stern feedback and all that sometimes. You need to do that. But um, just kind of balancing that situation. Another reason why it's like I'm not envious of, of having to deal with that, you know, uh, deal, deal with not just code, but, you know, people and uh, human resource management and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, what is my point behind this video? I'm not 100% sure except to say that like software development is difficult and probably one of the most difficult things about it would be dealing with the deadlines and then having to learn under such high pressure situations. And it's very easy to complain. Like even when I make videos, I'm like, oh, you know, Mui, look at this disaster of, uh, you know, we got inline styles and component CSS and external style sheets and all these different um, you know, attributes and such, and even the way we write attributes, it's like, it's easy to complain. 
but I mean, imagine yourself in a situation where like you're trying to manage the React project and how large that is, or like even managing something like the MUI project or individual software development teams within large multi-billion dollar companies. It is high pressure, high stress. You get paid a lot for that reason. Uh, but I guess, yeah, the whole point of this video is like, it's easy to criticize. I can do that. It seems to get more views for some reason, but make no mistake. I don't have all the answers. Um, even if I do complain about something, I think it's good to have dialogue. It's good to push back on things uh, where you feel like it's necessary. But then you also, I think, got to keep in mind, do you really have, you know, the answers to solve these problems? I mean, this is sort of a team effort and uh, we take things just one day at a time, I suppose. If you're learning to code, I recommend you check out my website, CodeHawk.com. My courses are fast to the point without the fluff that you'll find on other competitor sites like Pluralsight and Udemy. One of the reasons why you'll want to learn with me is that I'm a self-taught engineer myself. I never went to school for any of this stuff. I've been doing it for over a decade now professionally. The biggest reason you should use CodeHawk is that it's one price for everything. I try to make this as affordable as possible. Instead of having to purchase 15 to 20 different courses on Udemy or an expensive monthly subscription to Pluralsight, it's one price for everything on CodeHawk. Front end, back end, full stack. It has courses on all the latest web development technology. The courses range from beginner to advanced. So if you want to learn the latest web technology, give CodeHawk a look. There's demos for all of the courses that are out there right now. Uh, in addition, there's also my personal vlogs, which I'll be adding more to. So content that I don't release to YouTube is available on CodeHawk.